they're not the fathers of Western civilization. The Western civilization theory is not true, and that's disappointing in a sense that you lose your trust. So you don't trust anymore. You, you explore, you research, you learn to come to your own conclusions. Um, living in America, we're brought up in the European way, and it's time we learned our own history to let us know that we do have one and something to be very proud of. And coming here, I'm very proud to be an African. In the tomb of Rekmire, dating from 1450 BC, wall paintings represent people of the Aegean offering tributes to the pharaoh. In Black Athena, Martin Bernal uses this, together with a wide range of other archaeological, linguistic and documentary evidence, to argue his case for substantial contact between Egypt and the Aegean in the Bronze Age. He also relies on the traditions of the classical Greeks themselves. How it happened that the Egyptians came to the Peloponnese and what they did to make themselves kings in that part of Greece has been chronicled by other writers. I will add nothing, therefore, but proceed to mention some points which no one else has touched upon. The names of nearly all the gods came to Greece from Egypt. The Greek historian Herodotus, often quoted as the father of history, wrote those lines a thousand years later during the classical period. Bernal lays considerable emphasis on this ancient historical source. But Herodotus is also known as the father of lies. Now the difficulty with Herodotus is that other stories he gives are clearly fictional. Uh, that if he talks about the pharaoh prostituting his daughter to raise money to uh, build a pyramid, uh, or he talks about a magic ring that makes people invisible. You can't take those seriously. Uh, on the other hand, Herodotus usually gives his sources who told him this, and when he has contradictory versions, uh, he gives both of those contradictory versions rather than just giving his own synthesis. Uh, and I think he was uh, serious in this, and he should not be neglected because everything he wrote should not be uh, discounted because he wrote some things that don't fit our laws of natural science. There are in fact few surviving texts from the Bronze Age, so Bernal makes use of ancient myths. He maintains, while serving many different functions, myths can and often do contain historical elements. But can myths be used in this way? People used to think that the myth of the Olympian gods, the fair, comely Olympian gods overwhelming the titans and the giants, was actually a historical recollection of homo sapiens taking over from Neanderthal man. Now this is laughable to us now. In the same way, people used to think that the myths of the cycles of gold and bronze and iron and tin represented an actual folk memory of historical technological developments. Now what Martin Bernal does is to use this historical approach to myth, which really firmly belongs in, in the 19th century. Now for Greek scholars, there was no doubt, and for Greek writers as a whole, that the Egyptian goddess known to them as Neat was the same as the Greek goddess Athena. And uh, Neat was the goddess, a chief shrine in Lower Egypt, in Northern Egypt, was at the city of Sais. Critics voice their strongest doubts over Bernal's approach to language and word derivations, or etymologies. In the 19th century, linguists were able to trace 40 to 50 percent of Greek words to a language family known as Indo-European, from which most other European languages had also evolved. But Bernal is trying to account for the other missing half. I am a, a language junkie, uh, that when I see something about an obscure language, I'm tempted by it. Uh, and I was in Heffers, and I saw a 
an etymological dictionary of Coptic. Now this may not appeal to many people, but to my strange tastes it was extraordinarily attractive. So I picked it out and I started looking at Coptic words and the ancient Egyptian uh, roots that they had. And I suddenly began to see that maybe some of the Greek words that are not explained in terms of Indo-European, I hadn't been able to find Semitic roots for, might well have Egyptian roots. I think Martin Bernal is an enthusiast, and he has all the good sides of an enthusiast. When it comes to ancient languages, it's very easy to take a bit here, take a bit there, put them together, and come up with the conclusion you want. And from time to time, I think you can catch him out doing this. Not consciously, but that is the result he's arriving at. He wants a particular conclusion, so he tends to make the languages fit that conclusion. I myself, as someone who is by no means a specialist in ancient languages, am not at all persuaded by most of his etymological arguments. I also think that to say that one word is like another word, sounds like it, is not really very helpful when there are other ways in which the Greeks adopted foreign names and translated them, and that is much more meaningful. For example, Phoenicians is presumably a Greek translation of Canaanite, meaning the purple people, into Greek. That means the Greeks understood this language. They did not just pick up a name the way Americans have used still Indian names for many place names. That means that they understood what this place name meant, that there was all kinds of bilingual contact. So I think etymology is, is one of the arguments from the past that can be discarded. In the Aegean, 75 miles north of Crete, lies the island of Thera. A huge volcanic eruption blew the island apart in 1628 BC. Just 20 years ago, under the volcanic debris, the remains of a sophisticated Bronze Age city were uncovered. Better preserved than the Roman Pompeii, excavators believe they've only revealed one-thirtieth of the whole site, known as Acrotiri. Bernal believes that the population of the city had close contacts with the Egyptians. From what I have read in this book, I can say that I suspect that uh, the author has never visited the site because uh, there is no evidence of Egyptian presence here at all, neither in architecture, nor in pottery, nor in any other kinds. Of course, we have evidence of contacts of this site with the outside world from the East Mediterranean, including Egypt, and perhaps with West Mediterranean.